automating your book production. What happens when you outsource? All right, welcome everybody. I'm Scott Patton, he's Chaffee Tan Nguyen, and we're gonna be talking about book production, all right? Because uh, we've, we've basically moved the focus of our show to um, authors. You know, if you've got any questions, put it in the chat, we're gonna answer them. If you've got any things that you're wondering about, worried about, whatever, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that. We are live and in Technicolor. And uh, so we've got a whole pile of topics for the next uh, six months that we're going to cover. And some of them will be shorter, six some months. of them faster. <laughs> well, I think there's about 100. So, well, no, Ooh. 40. So once a week, uh, maybe it's a year. Anyway, when it comes to book production, when it comes to authoring books, when it comes to producing books, there's a lot of topics when it comes to selling books. And... Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing from now on. If you have any questions, if you're an author and you want to be uh, spot uh, lighted on our show, then just go to, and actually I have it. I'm going to put it at the bottom here. Thanks to Chaffee's smart thinking last week. Free-ebooks.net forward slash guest. It'll give you the calendar and you'll be able to pick a time and a date well you know it's the same time every week so good luck with that uh, but uh, we'd be happy to have you on so we want to kind of switch back and forth from talking about things that authors need in order to get the books out to talking about books that authors have had to get out but today chaffee we're going to be talking about outsourcing the book production and one of the reasons i'm so excited to have you on the show with us today talking about that is because you are an expert on outsourcing your book production. Now, when I think about it, I think about, well, we need somebody to go chop down the trees and then someone to chip the trees up and smoosh it into some liquid or something and then, you know, flatten it so it becomes a paper that we can then, you know, print on and then bind and all the rest of it. Uh, but you go one step further when you talk about uh, production and that is you actually outsource the creative process part of the creative process the writing part which most authors are I'm the author I write what are you talking about letting somebody else do that and uh, knowing that that's one thing that you do a lot I think that would be a good place to start Chaffee so you have 342 children's books uh, all number one on Amazon, and uh, you never wrote one word in any of those books, and you never drew one picture in any of those books. Well, that's not necessarily true, Scott. I mean, the 342 is kind of pushing it. No, I'm just well, kidding. <laughs> it's like 12, 12 or 14 or 16 in around there that you've got produced, not necessarily live on Amazon right now. Yeah, so we uh, have launched six or seven books. And uh, I have a partner in this business. Um, so we launched six or seven, and we have another six or seven that are completed. And we're constantly producing new ones. The one that we just finished was a Mother's Day book, which is um, we're um, going to launch that for Mother's Day, which is next month. And so it, it jumped ahead of the queue because you had all these books that are ready beforehand. Correct. And so you're not going to launch this like at Thanksgiving because you've got these seven books ahead of it. Correct. And then we're also developing a Father's Day book. Since we did Mother's Day, we're going to do a Father's Day book. So oh, that will be in June. So. Be cool. So I had a question. Now I forgot what it was. Uh, what is your process for creating these books? Because you don't do the writing and you don't do the illustrations. Well, we do um, in, in these books. So I, we have two kinds of books, right? One is what I call a, a storybook, a novel book. And then we also have what we call special books. And our special books are kind of like written in prose. They're kind of like rhymes. And so we, uh, my partner and I do write an, the initial concept, the initial storyline, the initial prose. And then we outsource um, the fleshing out of what we, uh, what we write and also the editing part of it. So um, it just depends on, uh, you know, 
what you're looking to accomplish and, and what you want to create. So for us, it's always two things. Um, when we have a regular book, that's not a what we call a special occasion book. Um, special occasion books are holidays and, and special days like Mother's Day, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, those kind of things. And then regular books are just storybooks where we come up with a story and then, uh, you know, create an, uh, a summary around that and then outsource the actual writing of the story. So what is the story? What, what's the concept that we come up with for my children's book series? It's about a little kid. He's about eight years old and he learns lessons and so the inspiration behind the book series was that my son was eight years old uh, and going through school and learning some lessons and we decided hey why don't we just take some of the things that my son's going through some of the things that he's learning and write start writing a book and share it with other parents out there and so the concept is what is first and foremost what is the lesson that he's going to learn right and so we always start with a lesson what is that lesson at the end of the day what did what did he learn and then how did he go about learning that lesson or what happened uh, that he got in trouble that he didn't apply that lesson and then he learned that this is the actual lesson and so um so do you, you have know. an example of a lesson that you could share with us sure uh let me see um, do i have a, one of the books here i might have one of the books here um actually i got a couple of them oh i have a one of each so this this book here for example is saving money makes sense okay so saving money makes sense and so the the lesson in the book we always end with the lesson is i know i should uh let's see i know i should not have spent all my money because saving money makes sense and so the lesson is you know saving money can help you in the long run and so how did he come about this is that he actually wanted to buy something and he needed to save up in order to purchase what he wanted. And instead of saving up, there was a series of events where he ended up buying a bunch of little inconsequential things or small things. And then when it actually came time for him to buy that big thing that he really wanted, he didn't have enough money. So he, he ran out of money because he spent it all on other things. And so the lesson there is, you know, if you really want something, if, you, if you're looking to purchase something that is larger then you're going to have to save for it instead of just buying every single little thing that comes up and so that's that's an example of this book right awesome and then you had a second uh book with a different theme right yeah a so special... this is one of our special books right so this is actually just an alphabet book um alphabet stuff with nuff and so in here we just have kind of like uh, as i said a prose and we actually went through the alphabet and so you know surely you see all the letters uh, all the l's under the c right and so again it's kind of like a rhyming little thing larry the lazy lobster licked the licorice like a lizard right so little fun fun rhymes and, and things like that and what's cool in some of the books like this one each of the each of the letters in here we actually say count the number of times you see that letter on the page ah, so, so you have a counting thing too so it's really interactive for the children yeah or and the then in the back of the book we have the key right so this is a letter a there's seven a's in the letter there's you know letter b there's seven or ten b's right so that's a little key and so you know as they go through and they read one of these pros then they uh for example this one is what n right newton the ninja norwal never saw northern lights at the north pole at night right and so how many n's are in that statement and so they have to count that up and then you know uh check in the back of the um answer book and so fun little oh, very like cool that. yeah very cool very creative yeah <clears throat> so tell us a little bit so just walk us through the process you and your partner get together you decide you brainstorm i guess you decide okay we're going to do a valentine's day book or a mother's day book or thanksgiving day book uh, and then what happens so again um the, we separate which which kind of book we want to write and so let's just start with a story since most of the authors here really have a story in mind is again with what we do is we always begin with the end in mind right that's one of the uh, seven habits of highly effective people and so we begin with the lesson and then with the lesson we come up with usually two to three sometimes four different events that occur that will teach that lesson 
right? Or that uh, the lesson is missing, so he doesn't apply the lesson and he gets in trouble. And so we, in our summary, we'll write what the lesson is, and then we'll write the scenario of three or four things that will happen. Like he goes to the store and he ends up buying some candy, or um, his friend wants a, a, a toy and he buys a, a toy for his friend, not realizing that he's spending money along the way. And then at the end of the story, it's obviously he wants to buy this big thing and he has no money because he spent it on where did he spend it and re recaps it. And so that's usually just a summary. Um, like I said, usually a, a few paragraphs, two or three paragraphs. And then we take that and then we outsource that to our writer. And then our writer will take that and then break it out into separate individual pages. And with these little storybooks, there's usually about 30 pages, give or take, you know, 25 to 35 pages, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Actually, 25 is usually the smallest. Um, but, you know, so how do you fit the story of these events into 25 or 30 pages? And then once we have that done, where our writer writes a bunch of things, we come back and we review it, we edit it, and then it goes back and forth a few times and we have the final product. Now, if you're a fiction writer or if you're a, um, you know, some other kind of novel writer, romance writer, you can actually just write a synopsis, uh, like I said, of two or three uh, paragraphs of what you want that story to entail. And then you can outsource that to a writer and a writer, a, a fiction writer or a romance writer or some kind of writer can then take that and just sit down and go write. And they can write a full novel much faster than you or I, Scott, can sit down and write a full novel. So because that's what they do. That's what they enjoy doing. That's what they get paid to do. So one of the questions that comes to mind, Chaffee, is how do we make sure that they're writing about what we want them to write? So obviously that's a growing process. The, in the beginning, you're going to be spending more time going over things with your writer than you would be maybe after 12 books are done, right? Because by then you're into more of a rhythm and a routine. Everyone knows what to expect. You know what information you forgot to tell them in the first book, and you're automatically telling them that in the 10th book. Yeah, so, you know, outsourcing is, um, uh, it's a science of finding the right person, and it's an art of working with that person after you find them to develop that relationship between um, you and that individual of them understanding what you want. And I'll say that our writer, she's probably the fourth or fifth writer that we found before we found somebody that really stuck. Um, just like our illustrator, we went through a good four or five different illustrators before we found one that we really enjoyed and, and you know worked well with um, and so that's a process and it's a process that you're familiar with scott because you work with a lot of clients that outsource and uh, you have a virtual assistant company as well right <laughs> that's right we're, we're constantly uh, trying to figure out how to get the right person in the right job with the right client because it's so, like you said it's it's a it's a so it's what's an that art. um that initial step when you have a new client and they're looking for a virtual assistant or, you know, an outsourced person that um, has certain qualifications. And, you know, obviously some clients want everything, right? <laughs> they want to pay $10 for a virtual assistant that will do everything for them. So how right, do you deal right. with that kind of client, Scott? <laughs> well, it all comes down to expectations, right? And so we go through quite a, a process in terms of you know, who the client is, what sort of character they have, and, or, uh, yeah, you know, what their character, you know, some people are very sharp and they just want to get to the point. Other people are more social, so you kind of have to, you know, respect that type that they are. And then, and then it's really about, like, what do they want done? Because oftentimes they don't really know what, they just know that I need help. <laughs> so what happens a lot of times is, they also are not used to letting go of the work, right? And this is, this is me for sure. But they think of this job that they've got as this huge, massive ball, and they have to do the whole thing. And after I've talked to them for a while, I'm able to say, well, you know, there's really this task and that task and this task and that task and this task and that task. And so all of a sudden, you've got 20 tasks, and one of them they have to do. And then it's like they're shocked, like, oh, you mean I don't have to do this? I don't have to do that? No. All you have to do is show up and close and take the check and you're done. Oh, that sounds great, you know. And then you have to get them to that point because obviously 
the the entrepreneur knows everything in the ball and we don't so we pull all about you know how do you do this part how do you do that part but my biggest uh, aha moment has come from when they when i realized that they had this huge problem that was really 30 small problems and 29 of the problems somebody else could do no problem and they could just look after the one problem that was left or challenge or issue or task however you want to say that right but in this particular case it was like oh i have this massive problem and i'm the only one that can do it and I said, well, explain it to me. And after three or four more questions, it was like, yeah, there's 30 challenges you have, one that you need to do, and the rest someone else can do. So that's a key thing that you brought up, Scott, is, is break down what you want accomplished into individual tasks. And that's going to be easier for you to find somebody that fits that task versus I have 10 things I need to do, and I want one person to do all 10 things, right? Yeah, and it really is important, I think, that you find like one person per task. Now, maybe the same person can do three or four tasks. Maybe, you know, like if it was like, you know, maybe the drawing and the painting could be done by, you know, cover painting and the drawings in the book could be done by the same person. Maybe not. I mean, who knows, right? But the uh, <clears throat> finding people who love doing that thing is way better than finding people that sort of like doing all of those things. And they all try to do everything, but they, you know, that's uh, the problem. It's like you'll get people to who are your virtual assistants who, well, let's do all of this, you know, and it's like, okay, but you don't know how to do any of it except for this one thing that I, that I, you know, was the hook to bring you in, right? And uh, so you, you really, you know, that's, but when you plan it all out, all of a sudden you can say, well, these are this type of job and these are that type of job and these are this type of job, and then you can kind of, move it around and when you're talking to like when it comes to the books right you have you have to have the written you have to have the editing you have to have the formatting you have to have the cover inside art uh, where are you going to publish it like can you put it on Kindle you know do you know how to put it on Kindle do you know how to put it on what if you've got uh, Morgan James or Penguin books that are publishing do you know how to deal with those people then it's then you get into the sales right like how do you actually sell your book how do you get it into the bookstores how you know what sort of marketing do you do do you create a community like let's say it's a it's a mystery book do you create a facebook mystery group where you you know engage people in different things and discuss things about your mystery books or one book per per group you know can they engage your audience can you engage your audience and uh, but then maybe you want to have you know a video of you talking about the book or a video of you teasing the book or you know so now you've got videographer you've got to write a script you've got to record it you've got to edit it you've got to know how to put it on facebook or twitter or faith um, youtube ah, how could i forget youtube and you know and then it's like well like what if you do like a meme thing and you you know it's like you try to do something virtual or you do try to do something funny well now you need a different cartoonist uh you know so that it just spirals into more and more and more things and the person that's great at making a meme is probably not going to be very good at formatting the book so that it can go into twitter i mean into uh, kindle Oh, and do you want to do an audio version? <laughs> so now you need to have the audio equipment and the audio editor and the, you know, you make sure that your voice is, you know, the right voice. Or you hire a voice actor who then does all the talking for you or a voice over artist. And then do you want to put it on Audible, which is Amazon's audio book division? Or do you want to make it a podcast? Uh, you know, so... There's lots of different, once you get into it, again, it depends on what you want to do. We, I have one friend who, um, he took every chapter of his book and he turned it into an audio episode on, his, on a podcast that he started because of the book. Because no, he had 12 rejection letters. And he says, oh, I've got this book. I love the book. I've been rejected 12 times. Oh, I'm going to read the chapters. And those people encouraged him and encouraged him and encouraged him and before you know it he had 10 or 20,000 people downloading each episode so then he went back to some of the publishing companies and said look you know these people they love the book and so they gave it a, a try 
you know, they said, oh, all right, fine, we'll publish your book. And it won in Canada the Stephen Leacock Award for comedy writing. So it was the, like the funniest comedy book in Canada that year. And he won it tw three more times, I believe, uh, or was twice in the final. So his whole career as a writer basically hinged on him speaking into a microphone and having people listen to his books. And every book he had come out, he did the same thing. And when the publisher, you know, they didn't like that. And he says, well, you know, these people have supported me. I'm going to, the publisher says, okay, you can do it on one condition, which is the last chapter does not get released on your podcast until after the book comes out. <laughs> <laughs> That's and now funny. he's making audio books, and so he, he doesn't do that anymore. He's moved on to audio books, so he can't really have a podcast of the book anymore. But uh, so Well, that tells you how of... much those uh, publishers know, turning him down 12 times. Right, <laughs> right. And that's uh, almost cliche-ish, isn't it, with uh, you know these different things that get turned down, turned down, it turns out to be massive, right? Like Harry Potter, she's the same thing, you know. Yeah. yeah, Colonel Sanders and his restaurant, you know, the restaurants all right. turned him down for a long time. So you need to just persevere and keep going. Well, you brought up some good points. And, and I always bring this up with a lot of business owners that I work with, Scott, which is, you know, your business, you should know what's going on in your business. Like a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners, they just do stuff. And when you ask them, you know, how do you do that? They go, I don't know. I just do it. Right. I, I just take care of it. Like. And so if, if you tell them to actually sit down and document, write down what you're doing, sometimes they have a, a challenge with that. And, and um, that's really the first step of automation, which is writing down what we call workflows, how everything flows, how all the work flows, and SOPs or standard operating procedures. And so when you have your standard operating procedures broken down into multiple different workflows, now you know how your business is run and then somebody can read that document or you know watch videos or whatever however you documented it and do what needs to be done because you've documented it and so a lot of times what will happen is that a business owner or an author or somebody will start writing down the workflows of what's required to produce a book or to write a book and and they'll write down the steps and then you take those steps and then that's how we can now target individual tasks and outsource pieces of those workflows to an individual or to multiple individuals, put all that together. And as you're working with the individuals and explaining how to do each and individual task, you're going to update your workflow. You're going to update your, your standard operating procedures so that now your business is documented and then you can remove yourself out of that business and work on your business instead of in your business. So now you're not the bottleneck anymore. And so you can hire multiple people to do multiple tasks. You can end up working on five or 10 different books at one time because you have different people doing different things, or you have multiple people doing the same thing for multiple different books, right? And it all starts with, as I said, workflows, standard operating procedures, breaking things down into tasks, and knowing exactly what that process is to get that book completed for you for whatever book that you're writing or book. So you, you, the picture that you just put in my head as you were talking, Chaffee, and what you said I thought was brilliant, is instead of being an author, you're being a conductor, right? Because I had this picture Absolutely. of the conductors, you know, now's yeah. the time for the violins to play. Now's the time for the horns to play. And, uh, and you've just got all these things kind of working together. Well, again, you know, the, the best business owners out there, all the multi-billionaires and millionaires out there, they do very little work in terms of the actual task work. And they do mostly management, right? They manage the pieces or they manage the people who manage the pieces. Only the, right. the bottom line is that they're not doing the work, right? So yep. Yep. They're, they're the creative genius, shall we say, right? <laughs> like Elon awesome. Musk doesn't build every single Tesla that he sells. Can you imagine him you know, yeah, yeah. building every Tesla? It just doesn't, it doesn't happen. Or, or uh, test riding every rocket that he sh set, right. SpaceX sets, sets up into space. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty wild. 
Awesome. So uh, thank you very much for that, Chaffee. I think uh, we've got a good start on, uh, you know, how what you do to outsource the work. And it's really important that you spend the time, you know, surrounding yourself with the right team. We've talked in previous uh, get togethers about masterminds and, and that sort of thing. And this is the other side of masterminds where you've, you know, you've got a team that's actually doing the work as opposed to a group of people coming together to, you know, help everybody solve different problems that they've got. So, uh, so with that, do you have a tip of the day for everybody? Well, as you said, Scott, the, the tip of the day is that the first time you outsource any piece of your work, it's like you said, you don't want to let it go. It's like it's your baby, right? And you want it done perfectly. And so this is this is a really good quote that um, I heard from one of the coaches that I work with, and he was coaching a mastermind group. And and if you're taking notes, I would write this down because this is what our friend Jay Connor calls a writer downer, right? <laughs> and so what he said was that two people working 80% is better than one of me working 100%. And so think about that, right? If you have two people that are not as good as you, only they're 80% as good as you, working and doing something, they're much better than just one of you doing 100% of everything. And so if you can build the team out and, you know, uh, and have four or five people working 60, 70% of you, that's good enough to get something done, that's still going to be a lot more than one of you doing everything. And so, you know, that's what outsourcing is about. That's what uh, it means to automate. It means to systemize and work on your business is finding the right people to do things that are good enough and then putting the pieces together and the pieces that put together are going to be greater than you just doing everything by yourself. That was awesome. And the audience went wild. They loved it. And the other thing too, so here's the, here's the dark side. Cause you brought, you kind of tweaked me on this, the dark side of outsourcing is we tend to think that we're the best at what we do. You know, so we're an author, we've got this idea, we think we're great. And that's not necessarily the case. And I used to edit a lot of video. And when it became too much, I got a video editor in to help me. And she's like four times better at it than me. Things flew across and things did this. It, you know, it was just like, oh my goodness, like so much better than me. And so that's the other thing is like, you may think, wow, I'm a really great writer and everything else. And then your editor comes along and all of a sudden it's an entirely new book on an entirely new level. Or you, you outsource the actual writing. This is the plot. This is what happens, blah, blah, blah. And then your writer goes and boom, it's like 20 times better than you could have written. And you have to just say, my job is to get the best story out there, not to write myself the best story. Like I don't have to draw <laughs> the pictures. I don't have to do all the writing. I don't have to do the formatting um, and work to where you're, where your strengths are right like you know some there are some books you're going to want to write yourself because it's a it's a um, you know it's from the heart it's you know it's personal it's important you know a biography or autobiography or or a special story that way and it doesn't matter because you just got to get it out but there are other times like what you're doing with the children's book we come together we cut an idea we lay it all out the writer writes it the artist arts it and then we have a book and how much less pressure and less stress is it? You know, you've got young children, and just imagine if you're. Right. Oh, I got old dog. Hey, hey Scott. Case in point, you know, I, and I will um, kind of refute what you just said because I have to. <laughs> Even if you have heartfelt stories and you want to get something out there, doesn't mean that you have to write it yourself anyway, right? You can, you know. All of the think of all the celebrities, the athletes, the presidents, all those people out there that have written books. And in reality, almost none of them wrote the book, right? What they did was they sat down with a ghostwriter or somebody else 
and they told their story like the the person asked them questions and they just answered their questions from their heart of what happened and and they told certain stories and then that ghostwriter took those stories and then massaged it into a book for them and wrote that book for them so you know they didn't even have to write that book they just talked their story they talked their their life or or their their vision their message and anybody can do that and so Keep in mind that uh, you don't always have to write um, everything unless you're, you know, again, the the uh, go to end all be all specialist in a certain field that nobody can write down because you're the only one that knows that. <laughs> so. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to end today's uh, today's episode. So, Chaffee, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. And Chaffee, before we go, if somebody is going, you know what, I really need to put out a series of teenage books. I've got a bunch of ideas, but I don't really have time to write. Uh, what should they do or where? how can they get a hold of you? Well, I was going to say they should contact you and hire a virtual assistant and uh, get them going. Only you can also go to my website at www.keyconceptcoaching.com. Or uh, shoot me an email at chaffee at keyconceptcoaching.com. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. So that's it for us today. Appreciate you all a lot. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.